In the heart-wrenching saga of Patrice Lumumba's final days, fate led him to Thistville Military Barracks Camp Hardy on a cold December day in 1960. Accompanied by his loyal political associates, Maurice Mpolo and Joseph Okito, Lumumba had hoped to establish a new government that would pave the way for a free and united Congo, but hope quickly gave way to despair as they were met with cruel and degrading treatment by their captors, following the sinister orders of the treacherous Mobutu. Lumumba's last documented letter revealed the unbearable conditions they endured, living amidst lawlessness and inhumanity. Then, on a fateful morning in January 1961, the delicate balance of discipline at Camp Hardy shattered. Soldiers, disillusioned and unpaid, clamored for change. Some demanded Lumumba's release, while others feared the potential danger he posed. The arrival of President Kasavubu, Mobutu, and other high-ranking officials sought to defuse the situation, but it was apparent that keeping Lumumba in the camp was too perilous. In a shocking twist of events, Lumumba, Mpolo, and Okito were forcibly taken to the state of Katanga under the orders of the last Belgian minister of the colonies. There, they were subjected to a hellish ordeal, brutally beaten and tortured by merciless Katangan officers while President Chambe and his cabinet debated their grim fate. As night descended, Lumumba was driven to a desolate spot where grim executioners awaited. Reports suggest that three firing squads, under the command of a heartless Belgian contract officer named Julian Gatt, stood ready to snuff out the flame of Lumumba's life. The sinister orders had been given by Katangese leaders, Belgian police inspector Franz Verscher, and Gatt himself. A chilling alliance of power, bent on silencing Lumumba's calls for freedom. The execution proceeded with cold precision, with Lumumba, Mpolo, and Okito lined up against a tree. The darkness was pierced by the sound of gunfire as they were shot one by one. It is said that the execution occurred between 2140 and 2143, according to a Belgian report that would later reveal the horrifying details, their lifeless bodies were callously discarded into a shallow grave. But the cruelty did not end there. On the following morning, driven by a chilling determination to erase all traces of Lumumba, the Katangan interior minister ordered the Belgian gendarmerie officer Gerard Sote to desecrate their remains. They were dismembered, their bones ground, and the corpses dissolved in sulfuric acid. All in a desperate bid to prevent a proper burial site from being established, in the annals of history, the tragic end of Patrice Lumumba remains a symbol of the brutality and injustice that plagued the African continent during those tumultuous times. His dream of a free and united Congo lives on, etched into the hearts of his people, forever a beacon of hope and a reminder of the price paid for daring to dream of a brighter future. How America Eliminating Lumumba from Power Within a mere three weeks after the Congo's hard-fought independence on June 30, 1960, chaos and violence erupted shattering the dreams of a unified nation. Belgium, fearing for the safety of its citizens and the loss of control, deployed paratroopers to restore order, but the situation quickly spiraled out of control. Katanga province, driven by its own ambitions, decided to secede, adding another layer of complexity to the already turbulent landscape. At the center of this storm stood Patrice Lumumba, the newly appointed prime minister, a man whose fiery rhetoric and alleged communist sympathies drew suspicion from the United States. Lumumba, seeking support in a desperate bid to secure his nation's future, turned to the Soviet Union, a move that confirmed the worst fears of American policymakers. In the shadowy world of politics, the U.S. government decided it was time to take action. A covert program was initiated, intended to remove Lumumba from power and replace him with a more moderate, pro-Western leader. The wheels of this clandestine operation were set in motion, guided by the special group, later the 303 Committee, a high-level interdepartmental entity responsible for approving and overseeing covert missions. The strategy was multifaceted. Funding was secretly channeled to support pro-US leaders within the Congo. With efforts to conceal the United States as the source of these funds. Covert support also involved organizing mass demonstrations, distributing anti-communist propaganda, and providing material for broadcasts, 
the Congolese Army Chief of Staff, Joseph Mobutu, emerged as a significant player, executing a virtual coup and establishing an interim government. The U.S. government saw an opportunity in Mobutu's leadership and provided covert funds to bolster his position and prevent Lumumba from regaining control. The covert support persisted, with the special group authorizing funds during various political crises. The aim was to ensure the establishment of a pro-U.S. government, and over time, Lumumba's influence waned. Ultimately, the Congolese parliament approved a predominantly moderate government led by Prime Minister Cyril Adullah. The covert program continued to evolve, with funding extended to support the Adullah government and build a cohesive national political party. The U.S. government's involvement in Congolese affairs continued through numerous parliamentary sessions and challenges, all in an effort to shape the nation's political landscape. In the end, after much maneuvering and strategic calculations, the covert action program was terminated in 1966. Despite the withdrawal of large-scale political funding, limited support to selected Congolese leaders persisted into 1968, the story of covert operations in the Congo is a tale of intrigue and political maneuvering, a testament to the lengths nations will go to influence events in far-off lands. The legacy of these covert actions continues to echo in the historical tapestry of the Congo's struggle for stability and independence. Early life and career Patrice Lumumba was born on July 2, 1925, in Onalua, in the Katakakom region of the Kasai province in the Belgian Congo. He was born into the Tetela ethnic group and originally named Elias Okita Sambo. His parents were Julien Wamato Lomenja and Francois Talenga Otechima, a farmer. Lumumba had three brothers and one half-brother, he received his education at a Protestant primary school, a Catholic missionary school, and a government post office training school, where he excelled academically and displayed a vocal and precocious nature. Lumumba was fluent in multiple languages, including Tetela, French, Lingala, Swahili, and Shaluba. Lumumba was interested in Enlightenment ideals and literature, particularly the works of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Voltaire, Molière, and Victor Hugo. He also expressed his anti-imperialist beliefs through poetry. During his early career, Lumumba worked as a traveling beer salesman and later as a postal clerk in a Stanleyville post office. He had three marriages and one son named Francois Lumumba. In the post-World War II period, Lumumba, like many young African leaders, became involved in nationalistic activities, advocating for independence from colonial powers. Leader of the MNC, in 1958, Lumumba co-founded and became the president of the Movement National Congolese MNC, a party that promoted independence, Africanization of the government, state-led economic development, and neutrality in foreign affairs. He quickly gained popularity due to his charisma, excellent oratory skills, and strong ideological beliefs. Lumumba attended the All-African People's Conference in Accra, Ghana, in 1958, where he further solidified his pan-Africanist beliefs and impressed Ghanaian President Kwame Krumah. In late 1959, Lumumba was arrested for inciting an anti-colonial riot in Stanleyville but was released due to the MNC's strong showing in local elections. He became the formateur, delegate, tasked with forming a national unity government, leading to political negotiations and challenges, independence and election as prime minister. On January 27, 1960, the Congolese independence was declared, and national elections were scheduled for May 1960. Lumumba was appointed as the delegate to investigate the possibility of forming a national unity government. After negotiations and power struggles, Lumumba was ultimately appointed as the formateur. On June 23, 1960, Lumumba's government was officially invested, although it faced challenges and opposition from various political factions. Lumumba aimed to achieve meaningful reforms, including Africanization of the administration and unification of the country. However, the Congolese crisis erupted, leading to mutinies and violence in the newly independent nation. In response to the unrest, Lumumba dismissed the Belgian commander of the force public and Africanized the army, 
but the situation worsened as Belgian forces intervened and occupied cities, and the state of Katanga declared independence. <laughs>